Now, this is the fly I'm going to be tying. It's just a muddler headed cat's whisker. And uh, it's basically tied uh, much as the old cat's whisker would have done, been done, being the wing length and the tail length are both the same. This is more a, a mini lure rather than a small uh, sort of tied in the trout size. It's more bigger to represent like a fry. And the cat's whisker is great for representing fry. And uh, this is, I say, a muddler headed version. You could do the dumbbell, tie it the same way, um, great pattern, and you could tie it within international rules if you want to fish it in the competitions. Uh, just makes for a great fly. Now, the hook I'm using, this is just a standard streamer size 10 long shank hook. Uh, you could tie it much bigger, you can tie it smaller if you want. Now, it's a very simple fly to tie uh, the cat's whisker. And the thread I'm using, just this suits the, the deer hair I'm going to use at the head. It's just a chartreuse uni in 8 -o. You could use a 6 -o, be fine with a 6 -o. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to run my thread down to in line with the point of the hook. Just at the back, which is there. Now, the length of the tail and the cat's whisker is going to be the same length as the wing. So what we're going to do is, white marabou obviously, bring it 90 degrees from the stem, a couple of pinches together. We're going to then roll it within my fingers, just to bring these fibres together at the bottom, so we can tie them in. Just bring out the fibres to suit, make sure, and what we're going to do is pinch the tips here, just close to the end, just to line them up. So basically a finger and thumb here, and then I just pinch them apart. Don't cut them, just too straight a cut. You don't want that. To get a balance, like if you imagine, there, there's the, the length of the wing would be to there. And that's what you want over the back, so you measure the length of the wing you want. It's over the back for the tail. Just going to move some of the fluff just by pulling back on the fibre. Makes it better to tie in. And tie this on top. Just check my length. Just slightly too long, so yeah, that's a bit better. Trim this the length of the body, which is there. Now you can use many chenilles. This is the old, this is a glow bright chenille, this one. It's a glow bright chenille number nine, which is a fluorescent, it's basically a fluorescent yellow, so it's a good old colour. And uh, it was a great yellow originally was used in the cat's whisker. But just before we do that, I'm going to put in some flash now. I'm just going to use the because it's a, a the cat's whisker is a good fry pattern. And this is a crinkle flash. I'll show you what it is. In peril. It's got that mark on it, like scaly light mark. So what we do is we take a strand out. We double up on it. So a single strand, then I'm going to double on, double up, put it along the sides of the tail, a couple of turns to hold, and then I'm going to take a thread up, just tying in the marabou, just take a time you're doing this, all the way up. The way back down, I'm just going to fold this back, keeping it on the side of the hook, all the way down, and then trim it length with the, the tail itself. And there we are. And we go back to our chenille. It's going to, well, basically, you can, with normal chenilles, you can actually pull some of this off, but it's quite strong. So I'm using the inside of the sailors just to bear the the core, as you can see there, makes it far easier to tie in. So that's my thread, make sure there's plenty of grip. Just work your way up. Now you, you need it, for the muddler head, you need it like 3 to 4 mil from the eye. So we're going to wind the chenille up, make sure it's nice and tight. Then 
obviously follow the chenille up with the thread, put a 90 degree bend into it. Make sure you've got plenty of wax on your thread, a few turns to make sure it's secure. And again, just come in here, trim that away. If you can tear away the excess chenille fibres. There we are, and then we can tidy up. Make a nice base of thread down for your for your ring and for your head. So we go back to our marabou. Again, a couple of pinches. And then we can basically roll the fibres at the bottom, just to bring them together. Look at the length that you want, which is to the back of the hook. Depending where you want to tie it in, if you want a better taper, or slightly, slightly lighter, come nearer the tips. And you pinch it apart like we did before. Get more length. And make a space for your thread to come in. All this fluff is excess. You don't need all that. If you can pull from it some of this fibre back, you'll save a lot of bulk. So we tie this in. Nice and tight. Now, having the wing like this gives the fly a bit more movement rather than having it at full length. A lot of people, and I do it, uh, will tie it in line with the back of the, either it be the tail, but this is a, a very mobile wing. Now it's a good sea trout fly. This, it's very good for sea trout, uh, as much as it is for rainbows or even brown trout, but it's a, it's a good pattern. So what I'm doing here is just put a nice base of thread down, make sure the wing's tied in. I'm going to go back to crinkle flash. Another length here, I'm going to double up on it like I did before. You catch it on the side of the wing, the same length as the wing. Two or three turns down, fold it back. Again, cut it the length of the wing. Now, with the cat's whisker, you can now you could finish it that if you wanted. It's still a great fly. You could put dumbbell eyes on it, which would give it a very eye-like look. Or what I'm doing is I'm using fluorescent chartreuse deer hair, which I'm going to form a collar and a head with it. So first thing I'm going to do is bring out some fibres, enough to form the collar. Trim it away, take away any fluff or underfur. I'm going to stack it, so your hair stack it. You put in tips first. Tap on my desk to line them up. Just check they're fine, that looks okay. We can then remove it from the stacker. Now it's important that you make sure you wax your thread so you get plenty of grip. Now you're looking for a, a collar round about, if you look at the tips here, half the wing, so if you lay half the length of the wing, it should be there. So we come on with two turns at the top and then slowly, or just lightly pull and allow the deer here to rotate round the shank or round the head and then three or four turns through and then draw it back, keeping the thread tight and then put thread turns in front. And that will lock in your collar. Now we need the deer hair to form the murder head. So we come in and get the deer hair. When you cut it close to the root of the the skin, again you see the fluff there. Just make sure it's to remove that. It's these hollow fibres down here that you want for the head. A couple of ways. You've seen me doing this, but the first thing we do is make sure I've got wax on my thread. The easiest way to do it is just to stick the bunch of deer hair, and then we're using the, the hollow ends, the cut ends, just put that into the middle, with the, I'll put the eye into the middle of that bunch of deer hair, just hold it, come around with two turns, and then slowly tighten up, and then wind towards the eye. Once you get near the eye, you can pull it back, Nice and tight. 
Let's see how it's sitting. Make sure it's really tight. Push the tons of thread right tight up against the deer here. Just pack it a wee bit tighter if you can. There's plenty tons in there. Split finish. Go one, two, three, four. Nice and tight. Make sure the flat finish is tight. Come in, trim away. And then what I like to do is just grab a hold of these longer fibres which are at the back. You can actually pull them out. I mean you will catch the odd marabou fibre. You can moisten your fingers. Just moisten the marabou to sit back so it's keep out of the way. Take your time, being patient with your fly. And just got a curved pair of scissors. And then trim the head that you like. Which is, I mean, it's, you could obviously add it much tighter, you could have it bigger, you could have it smaller. It's entirely up to yourself. I feel this is a nice balance for the fly. So, what I'm going to do here, I've got a curved pair of scissors, just a small pair. I'm going to then use the angle of the, the eye, the, the hook, to start me off. Plus, I'm going to rotate the vise as I do it. And then, just keep looking at the shape. And all the way around. Take your time when you're doing it, as I say. Deer, deer hair, or cutting deer hair is just... Being brave, little at a time, working towards the back, you need to lift the fibre out to trim it and do that. So you can spend a bit of time to, uh, forming a head on these flies. And you can reduce the size of the head if you feel it's too big. It's quite easy to do that. Just go in and... There'll always be an extra cut here or there. I'm looking at the size of the, the head at the moment. Not too bad. That's fine. Reasonable shape. Now what I like to do is get the hair dryer. Just give it a blow just to see how things are sitting. This will the heat will tighten up the hair, the deer hair, so just bring the wing out. See your shape. Then we could go back in if we need to trim the deer here or any fibres we may have missed. 